Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson on substituting into a formula. Okay, so if you could press pause and copy that then please. And press play then when you're ready to move on. Okay, first example then. So I would press pause please, um, copy this example down and then press play when you're ready to go through the answers. All right, so the formula for working out the cost of hiring a car for n number of days is given as C equals 12n plus 50. Okay, where as it tells us in the start here, look, it tells us in the question, n stands for the number of days. So it says, calculate the cost of hiring a car for A, five days, and then B, two weeks. Okay, so let's do these questions separately then. So for part A, all right, we're being told that it's five days, which means n equals five. We just need to remember here, look, don't we, that 12n means 12 times by n. So if n is 5, then we're doing 12 times by 5, okay, and then add in 50 on at the end, okay? So 12 times 5 is 60. 60 plus 50 means that that cost is £110, okay? So that's that for part A. Then for part B, it says that they've hired it, so whoever's hiring this car has done so for two weeks, okay? So we're not going to substitute N for the number two, okay? Because N is not the number of weeks, is it? N's the number of days. So hopefully we know, don't we, that two weeks is 14 days, all right? So we're just going to substitute N for the number 14 in this case. So we're going to do 12 times by 14 and then add the 50 on afterwards, okay? So use the box method if you're unsure. To do 12 times 14 we've done it plenty of times before so that should give us 168 there okay then plus the extra 50 then gives us a final answer of 218 pound so pretty straightforward all right just be careful on part b especially n is not two because that would mean two days this is two weeks which is 14 days okay but just some simple substitution into some formula and those are our two answers all right, next example then. So I would copy this one down. Hopefully we recognize this one. I haven't given you a, um, a diagram of a trapezium. We have done this before, so hopefully we recognize this formula. Okay, so the formula for the area of a trapezium is A equals a half of A plus B times by H. All right, so two different answers for us to work out. Part A says calculate the area of the trapezium when a equals 5, b equals 13, and h equals 7. So all we're going to do is substitute those numbers into the formula we're given. Okay, so we're told that a is 5, we're told that b is 13, and we're told that h is 7. Okay, I put times here, look, because remember when there's no symbol in between them, it always means times, doesn't it? Okay, and then if you remember doing this as a lesson on area of a trapezium before, you'll know it doesn't really matter which order we do this in, okay? But what I tend to do is work out the bracket, okay? So 5 plus um, 13 is 18. And then we've got two choices here. We can either do 18 times 7 and then half it, or we can half the 18 first and then times it by 7. And what I would always suggest is it's probably easier if this number in the bracket comes out as an even number, let's just half it first, okay? So half of 18 is 9. And then 9 times by 7 is 63, okay? It's in centimetres and we're doing area, so let's not forget about there being centimetres squared. Right, if we were to do 18 times by 7, that's 126, and half of 126 is still 63 anyway. So that's how we do that one. And now for part B, okay? For part B, I've made it a little bit harder, okay, just by changing the units around, just to try and catch you out a little bit. So we're still going to substitute into the formula, okay? So we're doing a half of A plus B. Well, A is 4, B is 5, okay? But then H this time is 120 millimetres, okay? Well, these two are in metres, look. So we need to change this into metres as well. So remember, 120 millimetres... If we divide that by 10, that's 12 centimetres. And 12 centimetres, if we divide that by 100, is 0 0.12, uh, 0.12 metres. Okay, so this is actually multiplied by 0.12. And then we do the same thing again. All right, so we're going to do 
half of, and then 4 plus 5 is 9, times by 0 0.12 there, look. And this time, I wouldn't advise half in this number. I would do 9 times 0 0.12, okay? And then I would half the answer afterwards, okay? So don't overcomplicate this, right? Just do 9 times by 12, which is 108, and then divide it by 100, okay? So 9 times 0 0.12 is 1.08 so we're just going to do half of 1.08 okay and again don't overcomplicate that just do half of 108 and then put the decimal points uh put the decimal point back in so that should be 0 0.54 okay that's in meters squared because we've done area again right so the substituting into the formula is, is fairly straightforward okay we should also then be able to um confidently just work the answers out because there's a bit of application usually just be careful with what value you're putting in all right so in the first example it was you have to be careful that you're using 14 days instead of two and in this example you have to be careful that you're using the 120 millimeters as meters instead okay so they are the two examples so here's the main task now so i've put the four questions there look okay so i would press pause have a go at these questions and then press play when you're ready to see those answers. Okay, welcome back then. So I'm just going to go sh and show you the answers for each one individually, okay? So here are the answers for question one. So you might want to press pause again and then just make a note of um, what it is you needed to do. Press play when you're ready. Okay, here are the answers then for question two. So do the same sort of thing, please. Press pause and then press play when you're ready to move on once you've jotted down the answers or marked your work okay a little bit longer than for question three okay but they're the answers there for question three and then for question four that's what we should have done there as well okay all right last one then so we're just going to do the checking question now so press pause please uh, have a go at this checking question and then press play when you're ready to go through the answers. Okay, welcome back. So, two to do here. So, starting with question A. It says the following formula can be used to convert temperatures from degrees Celsius to, to, to degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's 32 plus 9C over 5. And note this that over 5, the divide by 5 part, is only on the 9C, isn't it? It's not on the 32. Okay. So let's see if we can work what F would be if C was 100. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to substitute C as 100 into this equation. Okay, so it's 32 plus 9C is 9 times by C, isn't it? Which in this case is 9 times 100, which is 900. Okay, so recognizing that this divide by 5 part is only on here is important. Okay, because what we're going to do now is we've got add in and we've got divide in. So if we think of um, bid mass, dividing comes first. So we need to work out 900 divided by 5 before we add the 32 on. Okay, and don't overcomplicate this, just do the bus stop method if you're unsure. Okay, 900 divided by 5. So 5 goes into 9 once, remainder 4. 5 goes into 48 times, no remainder and then 5 doesn't go into there, okay? So technically, this becomes 32 plus 180, okay? So then 32 plus 180 is 212, okay? So 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit is what that is telling us, okay? And similar thing then for question B. Okay, so for question B, it says to figure it out when C equals 20. So we're just going to substitute C equals 20, okay? So 32 plus 9C, which is 9 times by C, so 9 times by 20, which is 180, divided by 5. And then the same as last time, bid mass comes first, isn't it? So we've got to do divide by 5 before we do this part here. So just do a similar sort of thing, isn't it? If you're unsure about dividing that by 5. Okay, just do the bus stop method. Five doesn't go into one. Okay, five goes into um, 18 three times. Remainder three, five goes into 36 times. Okay, so technically we're doing 32 plus 36, all right, which is 68. So 20 degrees Celsius is 68 degrees Fahrenheit.
and that's it. That's all we need to be able to do, okay? So that is substituting into um, some formula. All right, so thanks for listening and see you soon.